All right. So that one's that one didn't do well in school. That one's recording. Yeah, they're all recording. That one's minimal battery. So okay, I ran out of water already. That's how long we took to get ready. You did too. I I had a full glass. Yeah. Yeah, Well, maybe I'll top us up halfway through. Mm -hmm. Welcome. This is episode sixty-two of KT Confidential. Today, uh, we're excited to have Steve Chicato join us. The newest addition to the KT team. Welcome. Thank you. Very excited to be here. Ariel's been rambling on and interrupting us this whole time. He hasn't peeped since we actually <laughs> said we're recording. All of a sudden got you. I let you take the show. <laughs> Thank my, you. My partner, Adrian Trot here. Thank you very much. Um, sorry, my phone's ringing. Every podcast, so, your phone goes off. I know. Well, that's part of being busy. Mm. Phones never stop. So, Steve, uh, one of the things we like to do whenever we have a guest on board uh, is just to learn a little bit more about you. Sure. So tell us your... Well, this is a good learning experience for us, too. Like, over the last couple of weeks, I'm I'm sure Steve picked up on me just asking him random shit about himself. Yes. But there's still a lot of stuff we really don't know about him yet. That's right. Absolutely. Let alone the audience. So tell us your, as Gary Vee says, your origin story. Where did you... From birth, how'd you end up here? So from birth. um, Where were you born? I was birthed in Toronto. Uh, Grew up in Brampton until I was about 18 and uh, went to university in Hamilton and spent four years in Hamilton. From Hamilton, moved back to Brampton, uh, degree in kinesiology, wanted to be a gym teacher my whole life, actually, believe it or not. Uh, Convinced myself that uh, my marks weren't good enough to get into gym, so got into kinesiology, worked in rehab for a few years, and had an opportunity in pharmaceuticals, which brought me out to BC. So I started my pharmaceutical career about 23 years ago in Vancouver. So I was selling in uh, BC and Alberta. Did that for a long time, um, 23 years to be exact. And uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, after a number of transactions with you guys, Adrian, we became friends and did a number of personal transactions, uh, wanted, a, wanted a change or some more challenges in my career. And I remember over a beer after selling one of my properties, you said, you ever thought about real estate? And uh, I'd actually thought about it for personal reasons, for you know investment reasons, maybe get a leg up on other investors out there. And you said, uh, I think you'd be good at it full time. And uh, a year and a half ago. and So that just planted the seed and ever it, since then? It planted the seed. You know, it, it, were, it, you ha- were you happy in your employment at the time? I enjoyed what I did, uh, but I needed to be challenged. Um, yeah, it was, right. it, it, it had become kind of complacent. You know, I'd done it for a really long time, knew everything, knew everyone. I mean, obviously you're learning all the time, but uh, just wanted to try something new. And uh, here we are trying something new. Cool. We're excited to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sorry, forgive my ignorance. What is the study of kinesiology? Study of movement. Movement, okay. Okay. So study of movement, physical education is what it used to be called. Okay. Kinesiology, but more of a science-y spin to it. So, and that that was, you you chose that because of your desire to get into phys ed? Yes. Okay. So is that where they teach you like dodgeball and stuff like that? Because that's all I remember from phys ed. (laughs) Gymnastics, weightlifting. (laughs) Somersaults. Yeah, somersaults. Yeah, somersaults. Yeah. I, I loved somersaults. I loved phys ed, Jim. Yeah. It was fun. I had great teachers. Actually, those are some of the most memorable teachers I ever had. And it's a shame that they're they're kind of weaning it out in a lot of programs. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Some areas it's it's not becoming mandatory anymore. I would think it's almost um, more important now with the health kick and now everybody's trying to be healthier and more active. But even mentally and developing, I mean, the things that you learn, being able to move and aware of your body, really important. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about your journey Mm -hmm. because I get asked a lot, you know, we have people approaching us all the time saying that, oh, I've always thought about everybody, everybody. I always thought about being a realtor. Are you guys hiring? Ha, 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 ha. And not too many people actually go through it or through with it. Um, so after that beer conversation, mm-hmm. it obviously got the wheel spinning. What was the process like in your mind? And then the actual process, like how long did it take until you you signed up for your first course? And then what was it like? Because you had a career, mm-hmm. 
a very good career, mm -hmm. a rewarding career financially. Um, what was that process like in in getting the courses completed? And you had a lot of meetings, you had training with us, you had training at the brokerage. Like there was a lot to do yeah. in a relatively short amount of time to get you to where you are today. Yeah. So maybe for those listening, and we do have some other past clients that are kind of in the same boat. And then there's a lot of people that we talk to, neighbors, people that we run into at open houses. Oh, I thought about getting into real estate or I thought that I would try it or whatever. I hate that term, by the mm -hmm. way, trying real estate. But Yeah, either uh, in or out. Can yeah. you, uh, and that's what we told him too, yeah, right? right? Yeah, I was going to comment uh, on can, that. Yeah. Can you kind of maybe dive into right. the uh, that process and your thought process and, and the whole bit? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, after we had that, that beer, the conversation, um, it, it intrigued me. Like, it, it really, really did. I think the timing was perfect. Um, so, I said, you know, I'll take a course. And the first course, even though it's, I think it's, being a real estate professional or something like that. It's the, the easiest or fluffiest course. It was hard. I mean, it was, it was pretty tricky because it was a total shift in mindset for me. Um, and I think the lesson in that was excellent in that you can't just try it. You're either in or you're out, especially if you're working full time, you've got a family, you've got other life commitments. You can't do it half-assed. I mean, you, you got to really commit to it and you have to be disciplined more than anything else because, I mean, they give you a timeline to do these courses. And I mean, I kind of dragged my feet a little bit with the first one. It took me about four and a half, five months to do. And then before I knew it, I was like, oh my God, I got to do another four courses, you know, in the span of a year. Um, so you got to be committed. I mean, you, it, pretty early on because it's, it's a lot of work and you know, it's a lot of money as well. Yeah. So you were literally going home from work and studying for probably six months straight after that point, right? After um, your first one? About a year, about a year. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I had registered in July or August of 18. And I wrote my first exam in January. And then right after that, I mean, it was writing down when I'm going to do my exams, how long each course is going to take me by chapter. And I got the other four courses done within a year. But to your point, it was exactly like a f another full time job. And you know, you got to communicate with your partner, you got to communicate with your peer group. I mean, really important that Aaron understood. Yeah, we're going to have dinner. Yeah, we're going to go work out, we're going to do whatever. But now three four hours i have to go down and study yeah that was a lot of work i remember that when i was taking the courses we were um both ariel and i were in the auto industry and it was a pretty demanding i, I still was too to give, uh, i said that i said oh, that okay. yeah we both were and it was a pretty it demanded a lot of our time so when we were taking the course so i would take uh, one in that industry you kind of you work saturday so you get sunday off and then one day throughout the week so the day off during the week i would spend studying and then when we had to do the in-class portion, which was mandatory at the time for uh, a section of it, I think I, I took a vacation yeah. and my uh, now wife, I think she was maybe my fiance at the time, um, she didn't take a vacation and she worked at the same company. So they're like, why is Adrian taking time off? And you're not taking time off. And she's like, oh, he's finishing the basement or something <laughs> like that. So anyways, it was uh, hard to do, especially when you kind of want to keep it on the down low. Well, it's funny you say that because my last course, I did the same thing. I took a week off when I did the commercial transaction because I just wanted to get it done. You know, I'm in study mode. I felt I was in a good spot. But what I did was I posted um, up at our, our up north property, a screenshot of the commercial real estate transaction. I didn't realize I had so many work colleagues. <laughs> oh, career change? Oh, no, no, no. Just special interest, special interest. So That's yeah, funny. Yeah. You didn't now cross, they know. It didn't even cross your mind at no, the time. I didn't because, I mean, in the moment I was so committed to what I was yeah. doing. And, you know, I've, I've typically tried to keep work and personal separate, especially on, you know, other social sites than LinkedIn. Yeah. But uh, I guess I had a few more people follow me than I thought. Yeah. Well, one one tip I can say, and you just you've touched on it, is um, people that want to get into the the industry and make a career out of it and be successful. Two things: one, uh, full time. I think you have to be yeah. committed a hundred percent, not only to properly serve your clients, but in order to put in the time required to um, to to establish yourself and build rapport and find, you know, leads and people that want to buy, sell or lease and, and nurture those relationships, but also 
don't have a plan B. Yeah. In the beginning, I was like, oh, I could always go back to the car business. And it was kind of like a comfort zone. But then I thought, no, I fucking hated it. I was yeah. miserable. Yeah. Uh, it was affecting me mentally, emotionally, physically, even like I hated it. So I said, it's not an option. I'm not going back to that. Yeah. So if this doesn't work out, I've got nothing. Yeah. Um, and then it just mentally, it just rewires your brain and you're committed and you you work differently for sure and i mean that was that was advice ariel you had given me because that was my original plan from talking to some other agents and brokers saying oh you know your first six months your first eight months is going to be really slow so you should you know work a couple days a week that's bringing you money and and i mean i've been doing this two weeks now full time i i don't know how i could do anything else i mean yeah you do the schooling yeah you learn but I mean, there's so much more and it's so different when you're actually doing it. Um, so I, I don't know how you could have, you know, one foot here, one foot there yeah. and uh, do a service to your clients. I, I don't know. Yeah. I also think people uh, are just afraid, right? Mm -hmm. uh, especially ones that were you waiting for me to finally talk so you could reset. <laughs> um, when I and everybody's <gasps> different, right? Like I didn't lollygag. I just cut the cord. And I said, that's it. I quit my job. I took a couple of months of vacation and then hopped right into it. That's the only way I could motivate myself. And actually, in those few months that I did take off, I spent a ton of money. Hmm. I was vacationing and I was spending money like I still had income coming in and I didn't. So it depleted my savings pretty quickly. And that actually helped not having money behind me actually helped me do a better job because I didn't have any kind of fallback that way too. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so everybody's different, but uh, it 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 certainly helps when you can commit to either the schooling or just the job full time, full blown. I remember, I, and I think we chatted about this on one of the podcast episodes. I remember doing a deal not that long ago and, or trying to do a deal and the listing agent wasn't calling me back. Oh, I remember this conversation. Yeah, I remember finally, about that. Yeah. finally, this guy calls me back at like in the early evening. I was trying to put a deal together all day long. He calls me back in the early evening and he says, uh, oh, sorry, I couldn't get back to you earlier. I was at work. Saying to me, he was at work. Guy yeah. works at a restaurant or something. I don't know what he does, but... I was at work. So like how, what kind of a service are you doing to your clients? But yeah, uh, For sure. Uh, so you gave lots of notice to your previous employer. I did. And uh, well, the first few days of the month, we kind of uh, eased back to work for everybody. We had a little supplier party here and um, gave everybody a little downtime. I think I gave you kind of a directive to – just stay away for a little while and regroup and recoup uh -huh. and get some rest and enjoy time with family, friends, drink, eat, all that stuff. So for the last couple of weeks now, you've been in here very consistently getting into the swing of things. Uh, you're out there with some of your clients already um, doing some business. Uh, how are you feeling? Feeling good. Um, excited. It's it's a lot. I mean, there's there's kind of a lot to learn and you feel like a little bit of a, a ping pong at first, you know, got to learn this system, got to learn that system, got to do this, got to do that, got to learn this market, got to do that market. But you take one at a time. I mean, you know, going back to what we said about doing this fully committed, you jump in and you deal with it as it comes. I don't know how any new realtors can survive that's mine, sir. You're bad today. I know. I don't know why it's doing that. I, I muted it. Hang on. I'll try to turn it I'm off. I'm going to mute you. I guess we have to <laughs> mute the TV. That's why. Um, I don't know how any new realtors into the business can do it on their own. I Oh, I've, I've actually said that to probably half a dozen people that I've spoken to. I, I don't know how you do it, especially now with the emergence of teams in, in various cities and municipal. How do you do it? Like, how do you do it, the support, and how do you learn on your own? That's that's so true. And yeah. then and then the amount of capital and resources that is required to do it the right way now mm -hmm. is unsustainable for most new realtors. Well, it's like, even expensive to get in, to get started. Right. Courses, so insurance, board fees. Yeah. And then 
how do you market yourself? How do you market your properties? How do you prepare your properties? How do you have all these buyer plans and, and, and systems and, and whatever in place? And the average realtor in their first year is only doing a couple of deals. But I think you said something that's, that's really, really important, and that's doing it the right way. I mean, that was one, you know, as I started on this journey, I didn't want to work with anybody but you guys because my experience was you're doing it the right way. I think a lot of people feel as they get into this, they can just hang a shingle and people are going to be knocking at their door. It's not the case anymore. I mean, you have to do it the right way. So let's learn a little bit about Steve, the personal side. Uh Uh-oh. So I learned last week that one of Steve's go-to foods are fajitas. I did not know that. Specifically likes the ones at the Lone Star uh, restaurant here in town. I do. Any other foods that you... uh, So your your background is Italian. I am Italian. Top half, lower half is French-Canadian. French-Canadian. Yeah. Um, So when growing up, were you eating... Italian food? No, no. My mom's uh, my mom's French Canadian, so we were raised very Canadian, whatever whatever that means. Grew up in the D section in Brampton or Bramley. Yeah. Uh, aside from fajitas, any other favorite foods? Oh, I like all the all the pub foods. I'm a big sports guy, so I'm in bars and pubs a lot. So you know, I like the burgers, like the pizzas, but steaks are always good. Love to barbecue. Mm-hmm. Sounds like my kind of food. I was wondering, where's that noise coming from? Her phone's very loud, but nobody can hear it. Jennifer, get off the phone. No, I'm no, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> she just hung up on hung somebody. Up on a client. <laughs> uh, Steve has a hobbies. motorcycle. Steve does you have do? a motorcycle. Yeah, I, do. I did not know that. I call it therapy. Yeah. It's a, uh, what kind of bike? It's a Honda State Line, okay, which is, for people not familiar with bikes, it's similar to a Harley Fat Boy. It's nice and... Oh. Nice and spread out and great rides like sitting on your couch. And when you ride, where do you where do you go? This area where we are is phenomenal. I hate roads, I hate traffic. So the the escarpment, the escarpment country, anywhere in Holmes, it's it's a great ride That's up nice in Holmes Hills. Jump on those back roads quickly. Oh yeah. And we're so close. Yeah. You know, five minutes and you're you're out of the out of the hustle and bustle of Milton. How much time did you get on your bike? In 2019, I put um, well, and to think I stopped riding. In actually, I don't remember if I rode after the accident. Um, 2,500 kilometers. That's okay. That's a good year. Yeah, I think so. And yours were all short rides, like you didn't go on any. No, I did trip? a couple long, long ones. Trips? I went up to Huntsville once in oh. the rain. That was fun. Ooh. I re- went up to amazing for you. Uh, Victoria Harbor wow. once, and then. Okay. Uh, back roads most of the way up. It was like a four hour ride to get up there and then a two to three hour ride to get back. We, my dad lives in Tiny, so we went from Victoria Harbor over to Tiny and then back down to Milton. So you've earned your iron ass badge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. Are tough rides. Yeah. yeah. It was fun though. I enjoyed it. Well, that's why I went with uh, a different bike this time. My first bike was a crotch rocket and it okay. was a super sport and I loved it and I still love them. Like they have a What's certain a crotch special rocket? spot in my Sports heart. Bike. Just complete track bike. Like it's, yeah. you're leaning forward. Why it's it all the crotch rocket. Because it's a rocket in your crotch. <laughs> have you never had one? Wow. Good, good to no. know. Yeah. Rocket in my crotch. You should try it. <laughs> my crotch. Yeah. Um, but it's super uncomfortable. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, especially for long rides. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, so this time I'm a little bit more comfortable. I have a friend actually who has a crotch rocket and she goes on um, crazy like 10, 12 hour journeys. And she, oh my gosh. She's great with it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Mm. Speaking of, I don't know, one of you said something that I wanted to talk about. Um, and it was something I came across today. It's a little bit sidetracked from the conversation. But a client of ours today messaged me and he sent me a post from Milton, our Facebook marketplace. I talked to you about it already. Mm. And it was a house listed for sale. And it was it was below market value pretty significantly. So he reached out, he messaged this guy, and the guy writes back and said, oh, sorry, it's sold. We priced it low to generate a lot of interest. Are you looking to buy a home like this? And so he sent me the screenshot of the house. No address. The address, like oh, yeah. uh, the, the number on the house wasn't legible, but I knew the, how, the type of home and I knew the areas it was. And there was a pin on the map 
so I looked in that area and I went on Google Street View. I went through a few streets. I found the house. It's not for sale. Hasn't been since 2016. Uh, and it wasn't his listing ever. So, wow. So this guy has a listing on a listing for a house for sale on Milton Market, or I keep saying that, on Facebook Marketplace. And he's using it just simply to solicit leads. I hope you uh, sent in a... I'm contemplating it. Oh, I totally would be reporting him. Yeah. No question about it. Talk to Aria and send him a screenshot of that. Yeah. Because that's the that's terrible. It drives me crazy. Especially, you know... it's, well, just, it's illegal. It's uh, extremely unethical and illegal. Like, it's you're not false allowed... Advertising. False yeah. advertising. False yeah. advertising. Yeah. Yeah, so on so many fronts, it's bad. But that's the kind of stuff that um, people are doing uh, to try to solicit business. Cause and those are the kind of realtors we need to make sure that they don't have a license anymore. Right. Period. Well, absolutely. I think, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think everybody needs to be called out on their mistakes or making, you know, poor decisions. And that's really bad. So, Steve, what's your biggest uh, fear? What are you scared of? My biggest fear in real estate? No. Just in, in life? general. Like, are you afraid of snakes? <laughs> Jen doesn't like spiders. My biggest fear. I don't like snakes either. I don't honest. have a fear. Maybe dying. I didn't want to get too deep because that's a first, I'm dying alone. How's that? Let's, let's discuss. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I just don't want to die. You're not going to die. I'm not ready to die. Hey, ask Gary V, okay? <laughs> you will die. That's um, right. One day you will die. So what do you do with your time here? That's the question. Yeah. No fears? Dying alone? More than I don't like snakes. Do you have fears? Drowning? Drowning? Would well, that's, that's dying. Yeah. It's just a way to get there. I might not die if I'm drowning. Well, you would. Otherwise, you wouldn't be afraid of it. I don't want to die a painful death. I mean, I, I just fall you mean, asleep and don't wake up. I mean, that'd be great. Eh? I am scared of heights at a at certain levels. Some that's funny because I've been skydiving twice, but if I stand on a look over the edge of a building, my legs get all wobbly. Like that bothers me. But skydiving, I love. I used to love roller coasters. It's funny you say that. Now, mm, not so much. I feel that at Niagara Falls. Whenever I look over Niagara Falls, I get that ooh yeah. feeling. Well, even watching a video where somebody, you know those crazy fuckers that do those stunts like running and yeah. hopping across building tops Parkour. and climbing? Parkour. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. insane yeah. where they're yeah. like hanging from a construction crane. But they're like high-rise buildings. Like, what are you thinking? I know. What these guys are doing. Well, and some of them have died. Yeah. You know what's crazy, though? Since I've had kids, most of my fears are things like them getting hurt. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like every, and I don't know, Natalie doesn't listen to the podcast, but she's not the best driver, right? So, uh, you know, I fear every time she gets on the road. Instagram clip. Did she watch us on Instagram? Guess who's going to start listening to the yeah. podcast? Uh, <laughs> Would she deny that? No, that. but in, in, in reality, it's like if I see the kids jumping off of the back of the sofa, you know, uh, those are the, and, and breaking their leg. Like that goes through my mind. Those are mm. my my fears now, I suppose. But I tell you, <clears throat> up at the cottage, when there's nobody around and it's really dark at night and there's some weird shit happening in the back of my lot in the quote unquote forest. Yeah. The noises are different up there, aren't they? Okay. So now that you say that, I suppose I do have some fears because like I and Alicia will attest to this at nighttime, if I'm coming up like the last one upstairs, and I'm walking up the stairs, I turn the lights out and it's pitch black, I will run like the wind. At home? At home, because I'm afraid something's coming up behind me to grab my feet, my no, little ankles. That doesn't scare me at and all. And they're going to pull me back down the stairs. I don't know why I have that fear. I've always had it, I like especially in... Somebody's got to remember that. There's especially a in, prank in basements. Like when I was a kid, coming up from the basement, that was scary. Especially if stairs are open, there's yeah. no risers. That shit scares me. Yeah. And it's funny because I'll just be walking up and all of a sudden I'll get this weird sensation that someone's behind me. <laughs> I will just, right, it could be two o'clock in the morning. I'll wake everybody up in the house. I'll sound like an elephant oh, going neighbor, up the stairs. Neighbor, you have to do something one day. <laughs> I tell you, I've been in some pretty 
freaky, scary homes, like showing homes or previewing homes. Yeah. Where I'd be in the basement and I'd be running up the stairs too. Like, Some houses you get a bad feeling in. Oh, for sure. Like something bad happened here kind of thing. Yeah. Like the one where I went where the kid and his dad were, well, the kid was murdered and the dad committed suicide. Yeah, oh, that's my. a sad story. Yeah. Oh, I felt that right away. Yeah. You could feel the, I don't know. Well, I used to go into abandoned houses and stuff like that. Like we went into the old Whitby psych ward when it was abandoned. That was really cool. I like that stuff, but it scares me. You know me. what I like about Steve is he's a Maple Leafs fan. Big Maple Leafs fan. Yeah. Finally. Big. A big Leafs fan. Although Chris is wearing his Leaf uh, he's sweater today. today. Yeah. I don't usually talk about sports. That's because you have nobody to talk about it on the podcast with. Right. Because I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I was telling Steve a story last week about how I took Adrian <laughs> uh, to... Uh, well, I guess at that time it was the Air Canada Centre and we went into the Board of Directors Lounge and he was sitting next to Larry Tannenbaum and had no idea he was sitting next to the owner of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. Quite the dinner. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, I have I do enjoy sports, like I, the environment, the atmosphere. I love that and I enjoy playing them, but I don't watch it or pay attention. To it. I don't know who's who. Sides from the Maple Leafs. Big Raiders fan. NFL. See, I can't get into football. I don't know what it is about football. I watch basketball, baseball, hockey. Even CFL doesn't interest me at all. You know what I love about football, NFL football, is you know when it's on. It's not like an every night thing. It's like Sunday, Thursday, and Monday. Just love it. There's there's not that many teams. I can't get into college because there's way too many teams, but it's it, it's such defined. Like Sundays one, to me is sacred. One thing. So I lived in Las Vegas and short period of time in West Palm Beach, and um, one thing is really really prevalent in those areas is that football is huge. It's the biggest sport for um, a lot of people. And Vegas is taking over the Raiders. They're moving and, to Vegas. Are they really? Yeah. I didn't know that. So when I lived in Las Vegas, the Raiders were everybody's teams. All my friends, Raiders, 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 Mm -hmm. Raiders. And it does become like this, it's almost like this cult community of watching football and nachos and beer and tailgating and having fun. And it's a pretty cool thing. Like you don't see that in other sports as much as you do in, in football. I just can't get into it. I experienced like that golf. with NASCAR. I went to a NASCAR yeah. race. Very, yeah. That was fun. Very loyal fan base. Yeah. Oh, Very yeah. loyal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huge, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, are we going to golf in 2020, you and I? I can't wait. I can't. I'm practicing already. I've been trying to get Adrian out golfing uh, I, many, many times. I'm hit you or miss. I, his golf swing. It's, it's like not a, terrible. It's oh, beauty. it's like an eight-year-old girl swinging a club. Come on. No, no. Don't give me that much credit. Yeah. <laughs> um, Looking forward to it, actually. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoy golfing. You know, I've golfed with uh, Chris a few times. He's okay. Uh, Steve Bruman likes to golf. Um, not that I'm much better than them, but they're definitely worse than me. Okay. Noted. And <laughs> noted. And I need to golf with somebody that's actually improving their game and willing to improve their game. So I'm hoping you're my guy. But as you know with golf, I mean golf you gotta play to get better. You know, like the, the three, well, four the times it's three, very, four times a year. It's such a technical do. sport. Yeah. I mean every sport is, but it's like it you need to do it so frequently, well, otherwise it, you lose it. It's very precise in so many different ways. Yeah. The wind, the weather, the how close you here, how yeah. close you are to the escarpment. Oh gosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I tell you, Granite Ridge, there is a force field of some kind coming off of the <laughs> escarpment that makes your balls do weird things. It's your like water. Balls yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to make sure we're talking about the same yeah. thing. <laughs> giving me that smirk like it's six o'clock on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> golf with me what i find is if if my drive is on my short game's off if my short game's on my putting's off i can't yeah. put all the pieces together at once but one is usually on really good and one's usually really bad so do you drink while you're golfing depends who i'm golfing with right yeah. for me it's like call of duty some nights i'm amazing you'd think i was like a professional and i should be on uh twitch uh and then other times you'd think i was a new 
player I've never played before. I just wanted to get something in there where I could relate to your golf. For right. me, it's Call of Duty. You know what's weird? That I've never played that game. I know it's one of the uh-huh. most popular. Do you call it a shoot 'em up? What do you call it? A, what kind of game? Role playing shooting? First person shooter. First person shooter. Game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've never played it. Um, but growing up as a kid, I was always big into video games, right? Like yeah. That was the era of video games growing up in the 80s. Yeah, that's when they like were when emerging. I, when, when I was young, my dad always bought the latest and the greatest at that time. So I learned on a uh, Commodore 64, a VIC-20, and a television. In we television. had all three. I remember those. And I loved them. And I played with them all the time. And then as I grew up um, and the actual now gaming consoles came out, the original Sega, original Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, I had them all. I played them all the time. But then as I got older, it kind of drifted away. And uh, I don't play video games anymore. I can't get into it when I do. They're usually sports sports games. Uh, I enjoy those sometimes, but I got to be playing it with somebody that enjoys playing it too. And it's kind of like one of those things I do once in a while, like maybe once or twice a year. I just can't get into it. But now, you know, I found that, holy crap, there are people like Twitch. Man, people are making a career, like a serious Million, career. Millionaires, yeah. What is Twitch? I don't know it's live Twitch streaming is. video games. So okay. you're, you've, you've got like a screenshot or like your video... Uh, of your screen and then uh, like picture in picture image of the player. Okay. And people just watching them live. It's really cool. So you're watching it's, somebody play a game. Yeah. Okay. And you can be teaching them and training them or yeah. showing them in Zen. But a, a lot of it is just entertaining because these people are just unbelievable. Like it's, it's, it's created a whole new uh, industry. Well, they've got like championships. Didn't some, Team just win like three, four million dollars or something like that. Probably. So yeah. esports is becoming very. That popular. reminds me of one of my favorite movies growing up, The Wizard. Did you ever see that movie? Is that uh, something like an arcade, arcade or Fred something? Fred Savage. Oh, I vaguely Fred remember Fred. it. <laughs> what what I don't show know. was he in? What? If you ever seen The Wizard, The Wonder Years. That was it. Yeah. Was um, that the kid? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I won't mention the street name unless you want. Two, but Steve lives on probably one of the most, if not the most, desirable street in Milton. Should I mention it? Sure. Yeah. Gowland. Gowland Crescent. It's a wonderful street. Yeah. Um, we helped him purchase that home two, over two years ago. About 2017, two wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Two and a half, May of 17. Um, that was tough because remember we there was one on the other side that we, we lost we out lost on. We lost out on. Yeah. I think it worked out for the better. I um, love that doubt. street. Yeah. yeah. Moreland's is nice too. We just helped some clients purchase a home on Moreland's, which is on the other side of Laurier. Um, but Gowland, Gowland is the street that you go to if you want the mature, quiet street with stable neighbors. Mm-hmm. Tighten um, it too, right? Like you know a lot of your oh neighbors. Oh gosh, I know. Before moving onto the street, I knew four people, yeah. um, and and it's very community. Yeah, like it's like its own little pocket within the city. And they're not going anywhere. Snobby no. fuckers, you are. The only people that no. sell are the elderly people that can't maintain their homes on their own anymore. I That's just, the only houses I see. And I just had this conversation with a neighbor across the street, who's been there for thirty years. He thinks it's great that it's. I mean, you're not getting young families moving in, but you're getting you know the the early mid maybe late forties people coming in that do have a little bit of money do spend it on the property to to update them a little bit but they're a nice fit as well to the neighborhood yeah young families can't afford to buy on that street no not anymore no um especially with the fact that they for the most part the homes that do go on the market are not really moving ready like you can move in and deal with it but you got to spend some money to update it yeah so you're talking you know you need to be spending one to one point two million dollars just to get on that street, mm-hmm. right? So that was a good investment. It That's was a good investment. Yeah, even good investment. even for buying in the peak of the market, you're you're gonna do um, quite quite well. Yeah. Speaking of which, we talked about this last week, but not on the podcast. Twenty seventeen was a boom. Right? Yes. Everybody knows real estate boom, 2017, shit's going crazy, multiple offers, people lining up, home selling for thousands over asking, blah, 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 blah. 
Uh, well, here's my newsflash for everybody. It's 2020, and the price of homes have surpassed what they did in 2017 for the most part in the areas that we trade. A home last night in the town of Milton had 56 <laughs> offers on it. And there's a ton of homes now selling in multiple offers. And I think we are going to see some crazy, crazy stuff this year. It's going to be, and we forecasted a busy spring. And it's turning out that it likely will be. So if you're thinking of upgrading your home, holy smokes, get get moving. Get your ass in gear. I know it's early in the year and people usually don't, think of things in January and they usually put it off and think the spring market, spring market. Now. And now, it's consistently now, every now, year now. almost. Go, go. That we tell people, um, like February is often a month that I'm a huge advocate of selling in because you have the spring buyers, but not the inventory yet. And now it looks like in this year that it's even earlier. So. Yeah. If And if you're upgrading, the price of the homes are, are, are going to go up tremendously in that six month period between March and let's call it seven months, March and October. And if homes don't appreciate one and a half percent a month during that time frame, I would be very surprised. I'd be very surprised. Hmm. Um, and there's no inventory. Well, there's no inventory right now. We just listed a detached double car garage home. And I can't remember if I put four bedrooms as a criteria. I must have. But there were only 20 other uh, Milton. comparable homes. Well, there's and, only 85 homes in all of Milton, urban and rural combined yeah. on the market right now. The lowest I've seen in 10 years. Yeah. Wow. So uh, now, so there's the double-edged sword, right? Like if you're selling something, you got to buy something. Mm-hmm. Um so a little bit there. But if you're upgrading, there are more options at the higher price points than there are at the lower price points. And there are a lot of first time home buyers, young families, people just wanting to get in the market or whatever that are looking, you know, under eight hundred thousand dollars or under nine hundred thousand for sure. Um, so if you're looking nine hundred, a million, million, two million, three million, five, whatever, there are more options as you get a little bit higher in price range. And if you go outside of the GTA core, uh, there are some pretty good options still out there. But if, uh, you know, and mortgage rates are still really, really yeah. low. There's no, you know, they might go up. Well, I don't know if they still, will. Even if they go they're up, they're still, still low. Well, sure. I was talking to somebody the other day and I remembered when my dad uh, uh, refinanced. Uh, it may have been us that we're yeah. talking about it, but I remember my dad telling me a story of when we moved from one house to another, and um, and he almost lost the house because of the refinance on it, and the interest rates jumped up to nineteen percent. It's insane. Can you imagine? Can you imagine paying for your house on your credit card? Jesus. It's crazy, too. I mean, even, you know, 20 some odd years ago when I bought my first house, um, thinking about interest rates at seven, eight percent when, you know, we've been lucky enough to have between two and a half and three and a half percent for, you know, the last number of years. So, yeah, even in the recent future, outside of our parents generation, you know, seven percent to the kids today looking to get into the market. That's high. Yeah, I bought my yeah. first home 16 years ago now or so. And uh it was at my first mortgage was around 6%. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember what my rates were. They were up there. Yeah. Most people most people couldn't afford the house they have at those rates. It's true. Well, even today, I think that's what kind of a big worry is for a lot of people. They've gotten into these situations that if the rates go up 1% or 2%. Well, that's, well, why that's the banks, where they, they do the stress test. The banks yeah. are doing a whole lot. And it goes beyond the stress test now. Yeah, now it does. It goes beyond the stress test. Like uh, lenders are really doing more in-depth diving and they're going beyond the actual physical criteria that they have in front of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, they're analyzing what kind of job you have, how long you've been there, what is the likeliness that you're going to be, you know, short on income or or short on a job. Um, So they're doing and and they're looking at your assets a little bit more in depth. They're looking Mm -hmm. at your paperwork a little bit more in depth. That's why a five day business, five business day condition on. uh, Well, we just have to do an extension on one. Yeah. 
Um, that's that's why a lot of deals are getting delayed a little bit or even not coming together at all. Right? And that's an important thing to point out for people representing sellers. If when you sell and it comes with a five day condition, set them up that it's not unusual that the bank may require more time. Well, even more so. Ask to see a copy of the pre-approval and, and, and do a little bit of a deep dive as to... Yeah. I ask the questions. I ask, what is your... And, and a lot of realtors are asking me now, like, why are you asking? Well, why am I asking? Because you want to buy our hot commodity. I want to know a little bit about your buyer. Are they... How are they qualified? Who are they qualified with for the mortgage? Right. What kind of jobs do they have? How long have they been on their jobs? What kind of equity do they have in their home? What's their home address? I'm going into it. Well, because once I... And there's a lot of questions that I do as well, and and it paid off. There was one time where a guy, a realtor, I was asking him questions, and I said, who's your uh, client using to get approved? And he said, oh, a mortgage broker. And I said, well, which bank is it going through? And he said, RBC. I'm like, mortgage brokers can't use RBC. Mm -hmm. So something's wrong here. And I dug in and it was very shady what they were doing. So you call people out on what they're doing and get details because you never know. Um, What else can you tell us about yourself, Steve? Open book. I'm around. You're, You're on a big kick right now, health kick. Very big help. People want to follow you on Instagram. Is that where you're doing most of your posting? A lot of it right now, yeah. Yeah. So just first name, last name, Steve Cicchetto. Um, Maybe you should spell that out for them. Yeah, seriously. Up until like two weeks ago, we didn't know how to pronounce it. You've done well, though. You've done well. (laughs) So S-T-E-V-E-C-E-C-C-H-E-T-T-O. We'll post it right here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No, it's like telling somebody your uh, email address. Yeah, Adrian. Yeah, yeah Cormendi Trot. It's your damn name. It's not mine. <laughs> Mine's easy. There's only three, three, one, two, three letters. Yours is the challenging one, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the last job, um, I, you know, it's an excuse, but I just didn't have time to work out. You know, I was on. I think the year that we were looking to buy the place I was on 140 flights. You know, in in a year, over 200 hotel rooms. So. Uh, yeah, it's kind of tough to maintain some sort of healthy lifestyle. So this year, really, you know, with the change in career, trying to change some personal habits, and I'm off to a great start. Got a great support network. You guys have been great. CrossFit, right? Is that your CrossFit? Yeah. Shout out to Reebok CrossFit Firepower. Um, a lot of friends there. Uh, been friends over the years. I've been, you know, this. The reason I moved to Milton uh, ten years ago is I got involved with the CrossFit community, but then work got really, really busy and. Um, couldn't couldn't maintain it, but they've always been there as a support network. So I'm back at it and off to a good start this year. Cool. Good for yeah. you. And what I'm really excited about, he has a cottage about, I would say maybe it's a 20-minute drive from my place. Mm-hmm. Really, really close. It's north of Huntsville in Katrine on Three Mile Lake. We can, uh, we can meet at Spicoli's and have a slice of pie. I love it. Let's put All it right. in the calendar. <laughs> It's a good pizza joint. It is good. Yeah. It is. It really is. Yeah. I wonder if they're allowed to use all of those. You know, it's all movie oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. Is that allowed? No, couldn't like, be. Like uh, the Terminator hoagie kind of thing. Yeah, and the whole do. place is decked out in yeah. movie memorabilia. No, they always have sure an old movie. Play. I don't think anyone's looking in. Uh, I don't think Warner Brothers is hunting down people using their stuff. I was excited building. to find them, though, because the only one we would ever go to, there's a little place called Yeti's. In Berks Falls. Okay. And then Spicoli's just opened up a whole yeah. new world. They used to deliver as well, but oh, yeah? I, th- I think they lost their delivery guy. Oh, okay. It's not a far drive. They're from from his that's, place, it's like 10 minutes, not even. Well, maybe 10, yeah. That's a bit of a drive to get a pizza. Talking you get really there and back pizza. is at least half an hour. No, I'm talking to his place. Oh, is it closer to him than it is to yeah. Sand Lake? Oh. Yeah. yeah. About 10 minutes. Yeah, but you order it. Uh, they got a picnic table there. Sit out there and eat it at the picnic table. Yes, they only take cash though. Yes, you, yeah. I learned out bring cash. Learned that's that's the first time I ordered, same. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Kearney O'Neills, Kearney, Kearney and O'Neills. Is that what it is? Kearney. How do you say it? Kearney. I say Kearney. Kearney. Yeah. Kearney. I don't Kearney? know Kearney O'Neills. Kearney. What is that? Uh, straight down five eighteen. Is it 518? Yes. What is it, a pub? Is it a pub? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that what it's so, called? Yeah. 
Uh, what's Suds? Suds is another one. Oh, okay. That's on uh, Main Street. Right. So on 518. Carney's Hop. When you go into it is. When you go into town, there's a stop sign. It's probably the only one in town. Uh, you get to the stop sign. There's a little chip truck on one side. Uh, the um, gas uh, station uh, and the town hall or something. The community center. Yeah. Slash library slash Algonquin. And you can there's taps there to fill up your water jugs. Yeah. Uh, so right there on the, uh, I guess that would be the north side of the road uh, mm-hmm. is the pub. Really good food. Really, okay. really good. I remember that. They have the, uh, they have the monster burger, the, mon- the monster lake burger, and it's like 14 inches high. That's a big burger. Whew. It's good. So, Making me uh, hungry. Look forward to spending uh, not too much time, but a little bit of time with you up there. That'll be fun. I'll yeah. invite, invite you over for some uh, spaducci. Sounds good. Cool. That's, That's episode 62. Uh, Thanks for joining Steve us, Chiquetto. Steve. Thanks. Follow Good guys. to have you on the show. Follow him on Instagram. Great to have you on the at team. Steve Chiquetto. At Steve Follow Chiquetto. us on Instagram at Cormendi Trot. We'll spell that one out too, just in case. <laughs> or just put it in the comments below. That works. Follow, subscribe. Goodbye.